So the Linus Tech Tips Linux Challenge has proven to be a very wealthy source of content for Linux content creators. Like seriously, every time one of those videos comes out, I get like 12 more ideas. Now, I'm not going to make 12 videos on it. That would be overkill because it would just get boring after a while and I'm not going to beat a dead horse. We all know that Linus is having problems with Linux, but there are some things we can take away from his experience to try to explain things a little bit better to people who actually care and want to learn about Linux. And today I'm going to take an opportunity to do that. So in the most recent video, which I'll link in the video description, for some reason Linus decided he needed a script from GitHub and then wanted to run that on his computer. It was for one of his audio interfaces or something. Something that is meant to work with Windows and doesn't have Linux software in order to run it. So he, he went to GitHub, he tried to get the script from GitHub, but he did it wrong and it was really weird. Like he like clicked save link as and it saved the whole page as an HTML file, which is standard behavior even in Windows as far as I'm aware. It's really, I mean, it was really, really weird. So the point of today's video is to say this. File extensions in Linux don't matter whatsoever. Like, you can literally name any file, whatever file extension you want, and it will still be the same type of file no matter what. So, for the example I'm going to use today, I'm going to be talking about scripts. You don't have, a, a script does not have to have a .sh file extension in order to be a script, like a shell script. Now, from a naming convention, a lot of time developers and coders and amateur people who do scripts like me, they use .sh to kind of signal that, hey, this is a script. That way, if you don't have color matching on your in your terminal or whatever that tells you, hey, this thing is ex executable, you'll know that this thing is a script. But you don't have to do that. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're here in a terminal, and we're in my scripts folder. Let me actually zoom in here if I can do so. And then let's just say we're creating a script. It doesn't matter what we're doing, or let's just say we were downloading a script. It doesn't matter how this script is created, but we're having one. So let's go ahead and create a script called sc. So let's see, touch sc.bob. And as you can see, that doesn't have a .sh file extension. It has a, a, a file extension called .bob. And we can create that file real easy and then what we need to do is make that executable so if we do chmod plus x sc.bob now it's executable now if we vim into that and create the script we can go through and just do a normal script now I mean this is obviously beyond the realm of what a new person would do it so what he did was he went to github then found the raw code and copied and pasted it so in my case I'm just going to go through and just you know type it out real quick so I'm gonna do a shebang and then I'm going to do echo hello Linus and then I'm gonna write this and quit this and then I'm going to run it now see Really, if you were on Windows, chances are this probably won't work because in Windows, file extensions matter. Like if you want your file to be executable, it's usually a .exe file of some sort. If you if it's a script, it's a .sh file. Uh, if it's a uh, registry entry or something, it's it's something else. You know, file extensions matter in Windows. In Linux, they do not. So let's just go ahead and run this. So we do dot slash sc dot bob, and we have echo hello Linus. There we go. Now, to show you that this also works with a different file extension, so we can actually just move what we just did, sc.bob, into, let's just say, sc.sh. And now if we do dot slash sc.sh, which is now the name of the file, we get the exact same thing. File extensions in Linux, for the most part, do not matter. Now, there are some programs that will not play well if the file extension is not there. So, for example, things like LibreOffice gets a little finicky if you're opening a file that's not uh, having an extension that it's looking for. But for the most part, the extension just plain old doesn't matter. It can literally be anything in the world. It could be all the letters of the, the alphabet if that's what you really wanted it to be. So file extensions in Linux just don't matter. So if you're trying to run a script and you see a .sh or you're trying to save a script, you can literally name it whatever you want as long though the what is important about scripts and things that you're running in the terminal 
isn't the file extension, it's whether or not the script is executable. So if you haven't gone through and made your script executable, it's not a script, it's just a text file. So it, it now, I mean, that's not always true. You can get by running a script that's not executable in like a file manager that kind of does it for you. That's kind of what Linus ended up doing. Really weird. It's not how you should do it. You should always make it executable. Even if you're not going to use the terminal, if you're going to go through and use it from a file manager, you can right click on it, change permissions to executable, and that's how you would run it. But no matter what, the script has to be executable. And that's what matters when it comes to a script. It doesn't matter what the file extension is. So this is just a short video. I hope you learned something from it. If you have any questions or any comments and stuff like that, you can leave those in the comment section below. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that stuff. We're like at 6,200 subscribers now. This is just absolutely mind-blowing to me. I mean, <laughs> like it just keeps going up. I keep expecting it to go down. <laughs> like, like, I'm not the most optimistic person every once in a while. I, you know, expect the train ride to end. But I'm so grateful for everybody who, who has hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, make sure you do so. I really do appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Patrick L., Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Neptool, Steve A., Sid A., Mitchell, Art Center, Amateus, Merrick Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, the BSC's Rock, and Peter A. Seriously, the glasses just make this completely better. I can actually read the names. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.